<laughs> Welcome to Truth Forum, a forum to discuss truth in the friendly surrounding, like we do at home, at kitchen table, at the kitchen table. I'm your host, Dr. Smith. I will continue to lead compelling, relatable, and honest conversations. My guests will range from community leaders, professionals, and real people whose stories will touch and inspire you. Our discussion will center around relationships, personal struggles, amazing triumphant, and compelling topics in the news. If you'd like to be a guest at the kitchen table, you may call us at 269-282-1490. Jane Brown said, I don't want nobody to give me nothing. I can get it myself. Amen. If you'd like to be on the kitchen show, you can call us at 269-282-1490. Or on the website, Kingdom Builders Worldwide 2 at gmail.com. Before I introduce my guests to you, I'd like to ex- acknowledge and introduce all those that have made this show possible. And before we even introduce their name, it's because of you all, we received a um, maybe a little small celebration. Uh, so because of people like our producers, uh, our uh, individuals help put this show together, all of you have made this possible, and so DJ going to tell us what we just received. Uh, Tiffany Smith, Ronnie Hoy, Carl English, Mike Campbell, Chanel McKinley, Javon Armstrong, Deacon Doug Jones, Kara Bolden, all of you that was a part of putting this program together. We want to thank all of you, and because of that, what did we receive? Okay, we received this plaque, and it's a plaque. It's the... Uh 2019 Access Vision Volunteer Recognition Award in recognition of providing the Battle Creek community with a quality television programming in the category of informational programming. The staff of Access Vision wish to present this certificate of appreciation to Dr. Tino Smith and the Kitchen Table, January 2019. Amen. All right. Amen. So we're we're mentioned in the Scene Magazine, yes, correct? Yes, also featured in the latest edition of the Scene Magazine on page 30. Somebody giving us some hearts. Thank you for all the hearts. On page 30. Thank you. <laughs> Click the hearts, y'all. Little, we thank you for that heart. A really nice article uh, here about uh, Dr. Smith and the kitchen table. So get, this, get the latest edition of the Scene Magazine and uh, check out this article. It's really nice. Yeah, all right. right. Amen. Yeah, the theme song we saw today was by James Brown back in the early 60s, late, probably early 70s. Late 60s, I don't want nobody to give me nothing. I could do it myself. Just give me the opportunity. And that's really what we're about here. We are grateful for all that has happened and things that we're doing. But most importantly, we want the same equal opportunity. And with that opportunity, we believe we can do that. Today, we have a great young brother, a great man on this show today. I'm excited to introduce to him Mr. Brother Kenneth Ware. Let's put our hands together for him today. Thank you, thank you. Yes, sir, thank yes, you. sir. Thank you. Listen, we did a little different introduction, you know, a little shout out to Scene Magazine. Thank okay. you, Scene Magazine, for acknowledging uh, the talk show. This is the first uh, first type of uh, award we receive, mm-hmm. Deacon. Uh, mm-hmm. And so we are we are appreciative of that. We do not take it for granted, so thank you for that. And again, to the staff, if it wasn't for you all, this would not have been possible, even not just those who are doing the work on the side, but people that come and, and support us every week, Melvin McKnight and Mary McKnight, and just being there, supporting us, we do appreciate you. My son, T2, full-time coach, and he comes out every evening to help his father out on his department with the... Uh, um, uh, Facebook Live. So we want to thank all Amen. of you all for Amen. all that you've done. Well, Mr. Ware, we're with you today, man. And yes. we just want to talk about a few things. Tell us briefly, just a brief intro, who you are, where you're from, and then we're going to go from there. Well, um, I'm originally from Battle Creek. Uh, Vanessa Williams, baby boy, as I would say. Uh, born and raised here, graduated from Battle Creek Central. Uh, different endeavors, uh, little schooling, but um, I'm back in the community right now. Uh, so I'm excited about a second chance that I have. Amen. Well, look, let's talk about you. You come home. Tell us where you come home from, how long you've been gone, and then I'm going to kind of share with the audience 
how you've been kind of intrigued with some of the financial subjects we've been talking about. So we're going to jump on that after you tell us that answer, where you're from, where you've been, et cetera. Well, um, I've been in and out of Battle Creek for many years. Uh, right now, I'm coming home from incarceration. I've been gone for six and a half years uh, in the federal penitentiary. Uh, and it's a life-altering experience that I've uh, experienced since uh, since that. So the transition coming home, I'm looking forward to uh, having just a new canvas, new paint, new paintbrush, and doing things different. I, uh, you've been coming to our Bible class every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm honored that you've chose our ministry and you chose me to be your senior pastor and your covering, mm -hmm. and I'm honored that you would even uh, consider me. I read this article a while back. We had a lot of people that kind of responded. Some people thought I was making the statement. Deacon and I was going back and forth. Mm -hmm. We were talking about poor people brain. Poor people brain. Okay. And. I notice in our Bible lessons, you are very intrigued with with uh, self development. Um, yes, I am. Uh, entrepreneurship. So I'm going to read the same article again, and I want to see okay. how you take the article, and uh, because it's important, because I believe as a man thinketh in his heart, so, so is he. he. Amen. You know, I so, believe that too. So I don't really care about what an article say. I don't care what people say. It's what you think. Mm -hmm. um, it says that I, I share with everyone that um, I read an article and the author appears to believe that giving financial information to poor people was a complete waste of time. So when I'm sharing information mm -hmm. and if you're poor, according to this author, it's a waste of time. How you take that? Because you can go both ways. I'm not poor. I am poor. How you take when a, when a, it was a Caucasian man. Mm -hmm. It was a white guy. Mm -hmm. But he made the statement that giving financial information to poor people was a complete waste of time. I believe that to be totally wrong. Uh, you can give information to people and it's up to them to do with it. You can be smart, you can have a lot of knowledge, but if you don't implement it and use it, um, it's useless. Uh, their schooling and the financial information that we get, in my opinion, uh, from school, they really don't teach you financial information. Uh, they teach you a lot of English and math, but in reality, they don't teach you finances and how to uh, expound on that once you're once you're an adult. Um, so, I believe that you know me coming from where I come from. I'm not. I wasn't born rich or anything. I hardworking parents um, grew up right here, as I said. And yes, it's a good upbringing. But you, when you get the information of someone giving you actual financial information and you can take it and run with it. Anybody could be successful. It's hard work. You have to be diligent. But as far as just uh, giving financial information to the poor, you know, Hispanic, black, uh, Asian, or Caucasian, uh, I never would think that would be useless. So, so, Deacon, let me bring in the conversation, mm -hmm. and I'm for sure we may get some uh, people to thought. So what happens when you share it with these same people and they never catch it? What does that mean? If, um, they, if they never catch it, if they, if they, how many times have we been told, put money back, save, put money back, save? How many times have we been told that it's not how much you make, it's, it's what you do what you with say. it? Yeah, man. And that never happened. Why is that? Does that make you, is that a poor person? See, people look at the word poor and think it means lack of money. You could be financially secure and be poor. True. So, so I want to I get your feedback because a lot of folks had a response on that. They didn't, they didn't know if they agree with it. How many times do you keep telling your child something and you finally stop? <laughs> Many times, you know, okay. I've, I've, my mother has told me many times to uh, 
changed what I was doing. You know, uh, I wasn't raised that way. So it took, I believe, the incarceration. You know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, as the old saying would say. So um, sometimes you have to go through life experiences to actually get it to say, hey, you know, this is what they were telling me when I was young. And uh, it took me 49, 50 years before I actually realized it. So, you know, I've had the opportunity, but I squandered it. So, so does that make you a poor person? No, I'm not poor. I, I'm, I'm a king, first of all, you know. Uh, not you personally. I'm, this is where I'm coming from. How many people do we know in our community that make fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. work ten, fifteen, twenty years, and if they were honest, they don't have five thousand dollars saved in their account? There are many of those right here. So, mm -hmm. is that a poor person? Um, you could say they are poor. So. I would, I mean, you know. Giving financial information to poor people was a complete waste of time. I mean, I'm just, I'm not saying I, I agree, I but where my concern is, DJ, Deacon, we have too many people who work, make good jobs, flaunt, drive nice cars, nice clothes, nice house, little house, whatever, but then when it's time to say what's in your savings, they don't have $5,000. So, That's a poor mindset. Right. I agree. So society says that a certain level of income is poverty level. But at the same time, you can, you can have a great job, like you said, and not have any money, which makes you struggling and poor. Yes. And because of your bad choices. Okay. You've made some exactly. bad choices. So exactly. is that what the author was talking about? I just, like to, I just loved it because it created a whole lot of dialogue and it made me think. The person argued that poor people do not have resources to save, but if you work every day, why you don't save? Right. Invest. If you work every day, why you don't invest? A lot, a lot of it is just a, a lack of knowledge. Is it a lack you of know, knowledge lack or is it our priorities? It's a, it's a lack of knowledge when it comes to priorities. Okay. Yes. You know? yes. people, okay. I mean, bad habits. Okay. People make bad I, decisions. Because when I first met you, I noticed you were very intrigued on purchasing property. You was very much into uh, new ideas, and I and you were you were really keen to a lot of those financial keywords I was saying. And I, so I'm, I was, I'm trying to ask you where that come from. What was it? Something locked up, or something your mind just put in you, and you just finally starting to break it out of you? What is it about? I got to do my own, Bishop, because I know this is my assignment in life. Well. I've always had opportunity. Okay. And uh, as I said, I've squandered it. You know, when it comes to uh, finances, I've made a lot of money and didn't make the right choices, as, as uh, Deacon was saying. You can have a ton of money, and if you make the wrong choices, is you know, you're a poor. There you go. You and know? that's the point but I'm trying to show you. I, I had an uncle, uh, my, my uncle Garfield, that actually worked hard every day, you know what I'm saying? And his motto was, the first thing, first person you pay is yourself. Uh, there's gonna be taxes taken out, you know, federal, state, city, FICA, but after that you pay yourself first. And if you continue the process of actually paying yourself time and time again, week after week, month after month, year after year, Eventually, you'll be in a. You'll have that five thousand, ten thousand dollars for a rainy day or anything like that. So, um, we grew up thinking that you just are supposed to just save in the bank or maybe invest. I've had some financial knowledge, and uh, you know, the good Lord set me down, and you know, I was able to have a clear mind, clear thinking and uh, actually study some finances and, and what I should do with my money, how to make the money legally, and uh, what to do with it after that. Us as, in my opinion now, us as black uh, people, uh, we just have never uh, knew the financial things to do. You know, I learned about- So we were poor. We were poor mentally. And, and mentally thinking as finances, yes. Because before you, I want to go further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Part of your arrest was because you were 
as many big time, small time, whatever dealer. That's correct. Okay? Yeah. So, what is it about these dealers, whether they go a year, five, ten, and they don't even have money for their attorney? Now, I'm not saying that was you. Okay. I'm talking about in general. Poor mindset. Yes. They make okay. all this money and now they're broke. Why is that? It tells me something's wrong. What about the women that's with these men? What they doing? They got the big pretty homes, or at least they got the apartments with all the rental center stuff in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You Sometimes, know, it's all loaded. Yeah. It's, it's loaded. It's Sometimes, loaded. Yeah, but true. then when the trumpet comes and they get locked up. And the reason why this bothers me because I know that the system has just used my people to get them rich again. And that's why I get frustrated. Because I'm watching, I'm watching that money just turn around and going back to the man. Trust, trust me, trust and believe. Mm -hmm. uh, a many Talk a year, about that. Uh, many years I've, I've done illegal things. I mean, uh, I know that it was wrong. I know that God blessed me with uh, uh, able to speak to people, able to talk to people, and I used it the wrong way. So by taking the finances and things, young people and, and just people in that uh, business, they see the glitz and the glitter, and they want to have the rims and the car and the, you know, and floss and enjoy what they call enjoying life, and never think about later on or going to prison or, or needing uh, legal advice, legal, legal counsel. So this is where me, myself, uh, I'm kind of on a plight, as I told you, I feel that we have the same plight to, uh, to talk to the youth and talk to the, the people that you're talking about here that are making 50, 60, 70, $100,000. And in Battle Creek, they don't actually have a lot of black businesses. Um, I've learned that it's not always the political thing. You know, uh, I read a book, Robert Kiyosaki, he says, you know, there's three sides to a coin. There's heads, there's tails, and then there's the rim. And we have to quit looking, being on one side. We have to learn how to get on the rim and look at both sides and take advantage of both sides. Yes, when you were talking about finances and, and things like that. Now, me being the age that I am at, at, at 55, almost 56, I understand what Reagan was talking about is on the trickle down. I understand what, even what Trump is talking about. I didn't agree with it. I didn't like the things that Trump said or what he does. But we as black people have to get our own businesses, our own doctors, lawyers, Burger Kings, and whatever, and support it. Not just get it, but support it. And that's what I believe. I believe in small business. I didn't know that small business, as America thought of it, was 500 employees or less. To me, I'm like, you know, coming from where I'm coming from, I'm thinking if you got 500 employees, mm -hmm. you really got something going on. That's not a small business, but that's how America thinks of it. So now, me knowing what I know now, I want to be in business. I'm going to be in business. I'm strive to, you know, to, uh, that's one of the reasons why I did what I did. I said, man, I don't feel that people are giving me the opportunity and paying me what I'm worth. And uh, so it leaned me toward the, the drugs, toward the streets. I wasn't raised like that to be like that. You know, like I said, I come from hard working uh, mother and father. My mother was a nurse. My father was a, a brick mason. Built their own home in the uh, 50s. You know, that was unheard of. You know, so I wasn't supposed to be as I think what I was, but God had a different plight for me. So now I know that I want to give back to my community. I w I'm going to be the pillar in the community, one of the pillars. But this is, you know, you have to start sometime. I'm just, uh, uh, I'm kind of mad at myself that I'm starting at 55 and from incarceration. But uh, it's funny, I, I talked to a, a gentleman in Kalamazoo about talking to the city and everything, a Caucasian man. And as I went in to talk to him, you know, I just up front and told him that I was, uh, had been incarcerated. And he just kind of gave me the so what. You know, but it, it was the best so what that I have ever heard because it was like 
the so what of don't let that stop you. Don't let that hinder you from what you're trying to be. And to me, he just directed me toward people that I know is going to help me. And the way I look at that is, is God. God will put people in front of you that will help you from nowhere to be what he intends for you to be. And uh, right now, from the six and a half years of incarceration and two years and eight months thinking about it before I got incarcerated, waiting on them to come and get me, I knew that I had to make a change. And right now, my, my plight is Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And that's exactly where I'm trying to be. I know if I, if I stay on that right there and trust in the Lord and, and get in business for myself, and just like I was talking to uh, some of my other constituents with uh, Kingdom Builders Worldwide, I said, hey, we gotta start now. If, if we woke up this morning, God is not done with us. So what are we going to do about the community that we're living in? What are we going to do to change that? So quote that scripture again, and I'm going to throw something out and watch how this, <clears throat> even though we believe in the Bible, watch how this offends people who become so narrow-minded that they won't catch what I'm about to say. Now quote the scripture first. That is Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. So that means that Donald Trump, and people think I'm a pro Donald Trump because I have Republicans at our event. I'm not a pro Donald Trump and I will not vote for Donald Trump. But that doesn't mean I don't like some of his policies. Amen. Okay? It goes for everybody. I mean, you, no one's gonna, I don't expect everybody to agree with everything I say at Kingdom Builders. That doesn't mean you can't have a relationship with them. We're individuals. But there was a tax that he did not want to pass, which was do not tax the father that leaves an inheritance. Correct. I was supporting that. You know why? Because my unborn grandchildren got money coming because I prepared for that. Now, does that make me a bad guy that I obeyed the scripture that we all say we supposed to follow? You no, see that? I understand. That's the kind of stuff we got to think differently. That don't mean I'm a pro-Republican. I'm not a True. Republican or a Democrat. I vote for individuals. But that was a bill that I supported. Because why should the government tax the money that I saved for my unborn grandchildren? Yes. But when you ain't at that level, you just said as all oh, the rich getting rich and the poor getting poor. But when you when you're not at that level, that's that's something that, that I want to expound on because you have to start somewhere. Yes. You gotta you know, most of us that are here, yeah, we had parents that work every day, you know, put in 40, 60 hours a week. But maybe they didn't go into business. Maybe they didn't do it. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't. So I feel that we, ha as as people, I don't, you know, whoever it is, is, but especially my people, especially the black people, mm -hmm. we have to start now. You know, time is the most critical luxury, the most critical element. You're it's not, time it's, is it's your not most money. Asset. It's not. Uh, yes. mm -hmm. It's not the other things. You know, so. We, if we start now, we'll be better six months from now. Mm -hmm. Six months from, or a year from now, we'll be better than we were, you know, so, six so, months ago. So let me, ask, let me ask this question. Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume that both of y'all at one time in y'all life smoked a little weed. I'm just going to assume. <laughs> okay. I ain't going to say y'all did. I'm just going to assume okay, y'all okay. did. Okay. All right. Weed is legal. <laughs> yeah. Look at the big picture. What you call those machines, or what you call those stations, the government in Ann Arbor? What you call them? What, you, what the dispensaries? That dispensaries? dispensaries? That's right, that's right. Yeah. Say it out loud. What dispensaries. All right. Who's in charge of that? The majority of the Caucasian people. Who's above that? Uh, the state is. And then after the state is who? Uh, well, actually, the federal government Thank don't you. recognize it, but the state is in charge. But the federal government, what Allow are they saying? They allow it. Yes, because they, allow it. they see an opportunity to make money 
and they took it out of our hands. Yes. You see that? Yes. Mm-hmm. You see that? <laughs> Same with Trust alcohol, me. right? I experienced that. Okay, I'm making a point here. If no one cared. Everything's about economics. Yes, it's always about the Everything's money. about economics, y'all. So now what they've done was, it's been legal. You go right to Ann Arbor, get your little card, and have, have your little stuff. So here's my question. What kind of money's been, how can we really make money under the ground now? In the underground world, where's money, how are people still selling weed? Because they are. Mm-hmm. Yes, how, how, how is that working? Tell me how is that working? Mm. How are people still <laughs> making money selling weed? I'm, when you just go get it. <laughs> me personally, I, I can really expound on this. Well, I need me, you to expound on it. Me personally, that, that was why I was incarcerated. You know what I'm saying? I was, was it legal I, then? No. Right. I was I was almost like a dispensary before it, it was legal. a dispensary. So I've actually been incarcerated watching it change. From illegal to legal. From illegal to legal, you, especially in my you, state. You locked up for doing so, something illegal, but now become illegal. Exactly. So, you know. I, Six I, years I, of your life. Exactly. So I've seen, and I, I have an opinion. I mean, I'm, I'm reading Time. I'm reading Newsweek. Why you special, locked up? Yes, they have special articles, special magazines about marijuana. So when I look at it, just like you say, and I'm not a, you know, I used to be a Democrat. Uh, Now I'm more independent. I'm just going to vote for the person that best fits me. Right. And uh, would support me. So when I look at that and I think about it, although it's illegal for the government, federal, right, but they allow it statewide. Right. That's because the federal government didn't know how to tax it. Right. Okay. It's in my opinion now, it's almost like they're kind of mafioso, like, you know, we gonna get our cut and if we can't, we're just gonna keep it illegal. Right. And they will make money that way. Right. But at the same time, when you see Colorado, when you see California, and then I literally looked at the tax dollars that Colorado got. And if anybody would ever go, which I can't go right now, go to Colorado, you'll see that they have the lights on every street and the streets are paved and there's new school buses and the, the rivers and the lakes are being cleaned and the bridges are being built and all that. Money from marijuana. Money from marijuana. So mm-hmm. it's going to be, it's just actually like this, okay, they say they got $350 million for the year. So when it comes to the Fed, federal government telling them, don't... Uh, don't sell it, then they're going to look at it and bring out their balance sheet and say, okay, federal government, do you have $50,000 for our, or $50 million for our bridges? And the federal government going to be like, no. Do you have $30 million for our school system? No. Do you have, you know, $50 million for the uh, roads, cleaning up the uh, natural resources and all these different things? And the federal government is going to say no. And Colorado is going to keep on selling weed. Well, each and the uh, and every state gonna and follow. every state is going to follow you because their states, their states are improving <laughs> I've every seen day. It. We won't have the issue with Flint when uh, we start exactly exactly. So what they're doing, they're still taking you out the game because anything that's underground or illegal, they're going to take it out the game because they expect you to do something legal. Yes, I've literally seen them say. On in the paper that they want to drive the price down of marijuana from it was like seven dollars a, a gram and they were saying it was like four dollars and twenty three cent a gram and they're still trying to drive it down because they want to get rid of you know the street dealer and yeah. let them deal it. Yeah, it's the same. You know, in my opinion, it's the same way. Yeah, it's. I mean, only the government can sell tobacco. Only the government can sell alcohol. Right. Well. They tax everybody for it and every state for it, but we can't. This is why uh, this community, Battle Creek, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm really appalled at a lot of things that are going on here that we haven't ever taken the, the baton, the torch, and ran with it like I know we should. And now I'm at that age. Like where, what? What? Name uh, something. Like. Like housing for the homeless, housing for the uh, the veterans. Uh, I seen in the USA today that 
uh, Battle Creek was like second worst in the nation for schooling. When I came up. Yeah, that's probably old. That's you, about two years old. Right, right. It, but, I, but I mean, even if we were second two years ago, it's not like we're in the top 50 right, right, right now right, in 2019. Right, right, so, right, right. I get you that. Know, uh, there's just so many things that we can improve on around here. And I believe that, you know, entrepreneurship is where we have to go and we have to teach the youth. We have to uh, do it as, you know, as older adults, seniors and, and uh, uh, baby boomers, but we have to teach the millennials and the ex XYZ generation and you know it's got to start somewhere so that's Kenneth, why when I seen you doing what you're doing I was excited about it and I appreciate it Kenneth I want to try to bring back some memories so everybody can get a good picture of it mm -hmm. so the day you stood before that judge um, and he sentenced you mm -hmm. can you remember your first thoughts Yes, I definitely can. I, uh, the judge told me that I gave one of the best elocution statements he had heard. And uh, I had told him that I didn't need five years to figure out I had done wrong. And when he said 108 months, I was kind of like <laughs> Jethro Bodine on the uh, Beverly Hillbillies. Billies. I'm pretty good at my goals and twos, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and 12 goes into 108 nine times. So I said, man, I... I told him I didn't need five, so he gave me nine. So I'm like, man, nine years at being 49 years old. He gave is you a, nine years for selling weed. Yes, is a is a that is now legal. Yes. So check it out. He got nine years for selling weed. That's now legal. But you end up doing six and a half inside the wall. What was it like? Um, totally different. It's a different community, different mindset, different. Uh, everything you know uh, while I was in there it's, it's, it's crazy because <laughs> I, I had people come in from outside and they said in prison you only make like 5,000 choices a day every day but when you're in the free world you make 40 to 50,000 choices say that again one more time when, you when you're are in, in prison, jail you do what when you are in prison you only have maybe four to five thousand choices per day per day Okay, and outside in the free world, you have 40 to maybe 50,000 choices a day. You know, and when you're in prison, you don't got to worry about, am I going to put on this pair of Jordans or these Nikes or this? No, you got the, the black boots, you got the regular shoes. Am I going to put on this pair of khakis, that pair oh, of khakis? Oh, I thought you were flip-flops. You know what I'm saying? No. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, <laughs> only, in the, only in the I, shower, I, I okay? I thought they wore orange flip-flops. You know, I don't know. Them. Yeah, only in I, the shower. I, I'm way behind. I so, thought they wore orange suits. They don't do that no <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no. Can I do so, that? No, they don't. Uh, <laughs> you got regular no, clothes, I, right? I was, I was federal, so it was Oh, yeah, different. you was with, yeah. the, with, the, with the big rich boys. Well, you know, some of them, but yeah. it's, it's not as, uh, so it's fair, not like it was. Fed was like state. Different, no, right? No, Fed will move you around. They don't care nothing about sending you nowhere. And trust and believe, young men and women, you know, do the right thing because they don't care nothing about keeping you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't get it twisted. So how you get with, if you're allowed to talk about it? Okay. Because common sense tell me, if you went to Fed, you did something with with legal people. There's uh, no way. You, there's no way you could me not knowing. If you mm -hmm. don't want to talk about it, but just two and two make four. Right. If you did Fed time, you got involved with some Fed people or some legal people, some police department, something. Um, kind of be kind of stupid, yeah, kind of. Yeah. I, I, got I, tricks set up, something. You didn't sell to me. Right. Actually, you I had to sell to the captain. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just went about it different. My dad always told me to try to be the best of what okay. I was going to be. Okay. He never questioned what I was going to do. Okay. And, um, you know, I like to play chess, so I looked at it as playing chess. And the king has uh, loyal subjects. Okay. And he directs everybody right and uh at first they were trying to give me 20 years because they said i was running a criminal organization in battle creek in battle creek because i had people doing things for me okay that i would pay them for okay and um so as they do when they follow the money and uh see who's who and what's what then they come and investigate it was like uh, a lot of people that um did things for me. I didn't want to 
uh, involve them or have them going to prison, you know, they did what I asked them to do. Okay. And uh, I just took it upon myself. In reality, it was like when when you when you first get the the cuffs on you and they're they're talking to you, you know. Uh, they pulled everything out of my wallet and I carried my mother's license with me. You know, she's deceased. Right. But uh, when I seen my mother's face on the license, I could hear her talking to me. Mm. And it just was, uh, you know, that's how I know a lot of things that happened to me, I know it was God. He sent me to prison for a reason. You know what I'm saying? To get my attention, not to, uh, he said, I chose you, you know what I'm saying? So stay there. So somehow encourage that mother who child just been sentenced, maybe for a year, maybe for two years, maybe for three. But it's not for life. Exactly. And if it changed that child, that child may be alive. Exactly. Share that, because somebody need to hear that. So there's a mom grieving because their son just got sentenced. There's a grandmama sad because their granddaughter just got sentenced. Maybe there's a little hope in the message behind that. There's always hope. You know, keep hope alive, as Jesse Jackson used to say. Yeah, 84. So, yeah, so, you know, God has a purpose for us. You know what I'm saying? This is what I believe. And we don't always follow the direction. It's, it's almost like when the uh, man went to the moon, the, the, the rocket ship was only on course maybe 1% of the time. It, it's just like it always had to change, calculating. And that's kind of how I looked at life. A lot of times I was going left and right and never just straight line to what the Lord had involved. So as your son or daughter does things and, and that you may not agree with, God may set them down in prison, may sit them down and get their attention because we always want to be moving so fast. And I, I look at it as uh, actually it was a, a blessing for me. You know what I'm saying? I embraced it. I embrace it now. And, you know, I'm not going to let my incarceration hinder me mm -hmm. from being what the Lord has planned for me. Awesome. And so... Yeah, he said in 84 and 88. Yeah. Now, you gotta keep up with where that. are you at? You're part of Kingdom Builders mm -hmm. worldwide. With your experience, you're six years behind, other things you've done in the streets, what are you trying to give back to the community? What are some of the things you want to try to do as it relate to whoever you feel God has called you and assigned you to? Um, well, I definitely want to be an entrepreneur in the city. Um... I believe in uh, trying to provide something for the youth, something for the veterans, something for the homeless. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in giving back. I've always been a giver. That's why I wasn't a millionaire. That's why I wasn't, didn't have a lot of things because I, I know I helped out a lot. But you have to do it the right way. Even when you do it the wrong way, it's not going to get, you're not going to get the accolades or the you know, the things that you want. So mm -hmm. now I have a second chance to be able to do it the right way. So yes, I want to be involved in uh, things that will bring entertainment to Battle Creek or, or take people from Battle Creek to entertainment. Yes, I want to be involved in uh, building homes and, and uh, improving. I see a lot of empty lots here in Battle Creek now mm -hmm. since I come home. And I have an idea on what to do with it something new, something different that uh, is kind of the new wave what's going on right now. You know, I, I'll expound on that later, but uh, it's something that I know will, it's a win-win-win situation for everybody. The city's going to win, I'm going to win, the homeless is going to win, the, the youth will win. When everybody wins, it's good. I don't believe that it should be a competition all the time. You know, school is a competition, sports, although I like that, but instead of competition, how about cooperate? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if Bishop is an a, a student and I'm an E student and you're a C student, why are we competing instead of just cooperating all together and now we do it together and, and we take that test? And it's like that in entrepreneurship. You know, Bishop knows more than me but I can learn from him. Uh, 
you have a, a degrees and things I can learn from you. I have a, as I say, a PhD in streetology. You know what I'm saying? So I know that I can give back to the youth. I can give to you, Bishop. I can give to you, Deacon Jones, to where us collectively together is going to help the community, is going to help everybody. Deacon, you and Kenneth colleagues that went to school together. Mm -hmm. So the kid if you know now and the kid if you used to know then and the kid if you knew before, how that how did you feel when he became a part of this organization and you know how that made you feel knowing him as a colleague? Well, you know, Kenneth has always been a, a thinker, you know, even back in high school. Uh, you know, we used to, you know, run the streets, hang out. Uh, you know, I never never thought that and I would see Kenneth in prison. And like he said, he wasn't raised that way, but that doesn't change who he is as a person, and that doesn't change my perspective on who he is, because I know him, you know. But Kenneth has always been uh, kind, of, kind of a visionary type of person, you know. He never, he never really followed a lot of people. You kind of were like your own leader, yeah. you know, but you, we did hang out a lot of times, mm -hmm. too. Um, but a um, lot of respect. A um, lot of admiration. When I saw you walk into the church, you know, I was happy to see you. Yeah, I didn't know you had got out. I didn't know you had got out of prison. And uh, so I didn't look at Kenneth Ware as, oh, he just got out of prison. I was like, man, it's glad. I'm glad to see you. You know, mm -hmm. I'm happy to see you. So, um, you know, you, you've always been that kind of person, they, they kind of go-getter, yeah. you know, uh -huh. like you are now. Now it's just, it's just magnified. And you've got some wisdom behind what you're doing because you have some experiences that kind of forced you into thinking, you know, multiply the way you think. Yes. You know, you've always been a thinker. Mm -hmm. Now you have that right, that right mindset. Yeah. I ask this question all the time to my guests, uh, who, who's part of the organization. You know, what what made what was it about? First of all, who, who invited you to K Kingdom Builders? Um, what was that thing that kind of made you say I'm coming back? And then what made you decide this is where I want to be? Um, and that's for the audience's sake and for other people that's listening and even wondering. Um, I, I grew up in Macedonia Baptist Church with Reverend Young. Reverend and, Young. And uh, a great foundation. We, we used to sing Voices of Christ and everything. And, baritone? Uh, yeah, baritone and bass. I mm -hmm. sung bye, in, bye, uh, I in uh, high school, uh, also with the Ebonites. With, you uh, did. Mr. Chandler, who's deceased yeah, right now. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, recently. And, uh, Can you hear the note right now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> can you hear one of the old songs right now? If you can't, don't. don't no, no, I see it. I see it coming on. You know, I'm in the I'm in the choir, on. so I'm, right. I, I'm not <laughs> the soloist. You know what I'm saying? That no, nobody knows. Nobody knows. My man. <laughs> <laughs> My man. <laughs> so you know. Uh, My man. Go ahead. As they say, you know, I have the foundation from church, and, and just straight away, you know, as Isaiah says, you know, you will drift away, but uh, the, you know. You'll come back. Uh, I believe in, you know, I did some Bible teaching, and uh, I know his name. You know what I'm saying? You know, Jesus says in uh, John 10 that his sheep know his name. You know, and, and he's been calling me for a long time while I was doing the, the things that I was doing. But uh, that leg breaking was prison for me to change my mindset. Uh, I actually took a class called RDAP, which gave me a year off uh, early. And um, I said, man, I said, these, you know, these people in RDAP got all these different terms and everything, but it's nothing that my mother and my Aunt Velma and my Aunt Bernice and, you know, Uncle Garfield, my dad, it's nothing that they didn't already tell me. They just got a different term for it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, so I just look at... Uh, you like forget said, my question? Did I forget your question? Mm -hmm. What is your question? My question was, who invited you to the church? Who invited me is... And hold on, hold on, okay. hold on. What made you... What was it that you heard there that made you want to stay, and why is that a part? And the reason why I'm asking you that is because people are looking at you, and they don't always look at the preacher. They want to look at you, because there's a lot of Kenneths out there. And if yeah. Kenneth see it this way, then they may see it that way. So if they're listening to you, why did you go there of all places? That's what we want to hear. As I said, um, Kara Bolden invited me. Okay. Um, Good job, Kara. I, I knew from being in prison 
uh, that I had to go to a church. I didn't want to just go to any church. Okay. I wanted to uh, say I had been to different churches before okay. here in town. Okay. And when I looked at what you were doing, it, as I told you before, it kind of ran parallel to what I was thinking, helping okay. the community, uh, something, a new way of okay. uh, talking to the youth and everything. So. Uh, once I came and, and listened to you and uh, looked at the things that you were doing, I said, man, I could be a part of this. My sister told me that, uh, you know, if you go to church, go and you come out feeling good, you come out, you know, feeling better about it, then that's where you should be. So yeah. how do you tell that brother that keeps saying, church ain't for me? Because this is the constant conversation. And you're going to experience it, and you're probably already experienced it. Hey, man, I heard you in the church now, kid. Yeah, man, yeah, I'm in church now. It ain't for me. How? Because people see church as maybe you got the preacher, you got the choir, you know, you got the mothers, deacons. They talk about Jesus on the cross, but they don't apply it to their personal lives. How can you communicate why it's so important? Because you got them kids listening to you right now. Because we're missing that piece. You got the DJ that finally showed up. You got the Melvin that finally showed up. You got the Bobbies that finally showed up, you know? Mm -hmm. Ryan and them, they were already got to going to church, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, you got my man, uh, my little cousin, he showed up. You got these guys coming in. You got Elijah, and they all finally coming. What is it that makes you come? Because they need to hear that message. Because, you know, being a Christian, you can still have fun. You can still do a lot of things that uh, are fun, you know, enjoying life. You know, um, a lot of people look at, think you've got to walk the straight and narrow. We are, are all sinners. None of us are perfect. And it's like, uh, don't get it twisted. You know, there are going to be things that come up on you, but being in church, being in the organization, uh, and just going, striving for Christ and putting Him first in your life, I guarantee you that things will be better. Okay. You will, you've tried a lot of things, but try Jesus. If you don't mind me asking, what was the, when you were invited to church, what was the first thing you heard? What, did you just say, yeah, I'll go just to see what it's like? Or, you know, did somebody say, you know, hey, DJ's there, or you want to hear Bishop Smith? You know, um, what was it? I mean, what was it that, so when you came, something had to keep you coming? Right. I, I knew that he was doing things for the community. I knew it was something new, mm -hmm. something different. And uh, I've seen a lot of the old ways, and I, I want to see his vision and, and how he wanted to help the community. I knew he had came back to the community. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to see for myself. You know, I, I didn't want to take somebody else's opinion. Okay. Uh, had nothing to do with me, huh? Had nothing to do with no, me. Okay. <laughs> this, this is this is a session where I pick certain people to do. We're gonna call this Kennethology. I'm gonna pick a name. Tell me what you think about it. Give me your. Own, it's called Kennethology. It's your own ology. I call his name R. Kelly. What do I think of him? It's R. Kelly. You, it's kid of ology. Word, uh, one word. Kid of ology. You got, yeah. you got, come on, you got like 30 seconds. I got uh, more names. Mm, my little cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to think about, you know, him. I, okay. I Alex disagree. Presley. <clears throat> the white people's Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Our uh, musical leader, Donald Trump, <laughs> the voice of a lot of Caucasians that want to say that, but he says it for him. That's pretty good. That's pretty good on Donald Trump. Say that one more time. That's pretty the, good. The voice of Caucasians that want to say what he says, that's how I feel about Trump. That's why he got a lot of the rural uh, votes and a lot of the people that, as when we came out for uh, Barack, President Barack Obama, they came out for him. So and that, was, that was the next thing I was going to say, Barack Obama. 
shoot. One of the best inspiration for uh, our race, the African Americans. That's your kinophology, you guys. What I do is I just pick certain names and, you know, people give their own, because on Facebook, everybody got their own story. Mm -hmm. Everybody got their own opinion. They all have their own theory of what they think of a situation. Uh, I would like to revisit real quickly, what is your thought about how they're trying to, no, they're not trying, how they're removing different statues and artifacts of Michael Jackson because of this recent little documentary that uh, was produced on television. What's your thought about that? Uh, my thought is this, everybody always talks about they. I've never met they, okay? I don't know who they are, but a lot of people talk about them. So, if they are removing things that mean something to us in our heart, it's up to us to put it back. They can't remove it if we don't let them. So it's up to us to, you know, <laughs> if they take it out, we can put it back in. And that's up to us. Now, I don't think it's right that they're doing it, but if they are doing it, it's up to us to put it back in. You know, the same way uh, when you talked about the Hamlet Community Center, they took that from us. You know, I seen my parents work on that. Well, it's up to us to put it back in. That's why when I seen the things that you're doing for the community for and giving the opportunity for everybody, you know what I'm saying? Not, you know, not black, white or whatever, just everybody. The opportunity to improve this community. If they take things out of the community, it's up to us to put it back. If they take Michael Jackson songs and stuff, we got copies of it, let's put it back. We got these 21-year-olds, 22-year-olds, 23-year-olds. Things are getting better. Uh, we haven't heard a lot of shootings lately, mm -hmm. but when it was just really big and it's gonna be coming warm soon, what's that message you have for those young brothers? Let's get together and talk about it. Let's come to Kingdom Builders and play basketball, do the media thing. Uh, I don't care what it is. Football, you know, Butter's got a wonderful gym in there. We can have one-on-one, two-on-twos, whatever. We have to utilize the uh, things that we have at Kingdom Builders. So young men, young women, let's show up at Kingdom Builders and, and stop all this violence. Half of us are all cousins and all that anyway. You know, this, this even fighting in, you know, Battle Creek is too small to split up. <laughs> so right. That's my opinion. DJ used to live on the on the north side. I lived on the southwest side. But we never was doing all that. We just had fun together. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I was raised and how we grew up. And when I see that now, I'm just like, it's not even worth it. It's so much more than Battle Creek. It's so much bigger than here. But the people that you hear is, that are here is home. So let's get together and talk about it and just see, get to the root of the problem because it's always a solution. I'm about trying to get the solution. So I'm working with a lot of individuals that unfortunately have a record or a felony. What are some of the things that you can never get because of your felony? Is there anything out there that, I, what is it out there that you can never get uh, um, because <laughs> of your felony? The right to bear arms. Okay. Um, <laughs> the stigma of a lot of things, a lot of people. They're, I mean, if you have a felony, if you have if you have a felony, will that hinder you getting an apartment? It can. Yes. See, these are the things I'm concerned about, and I really need you that's in position to help fix that. I'm not sure, but I've seen a few brothers who's really trying to clean their life up because they had a felony, they can't get an apartment. And that is true. That is one of the things and that that's I want to do. Is that five minutes you're saying? Or you said five minutes? And that's a major. Yeah, I went for 20 to 5 in 10 minutes. That's a, that's major. It's major. That's it's a major problem that, and now our time won't allow us to finish that, but the people we're trying to help, you get a felony, you clean your life up, and you can't get an apartment. So now you're stuck. That means you got to build our own stuff, or are you yes. going back out in the game? Exactly, and and that's, and that's what, the problem, DJ. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to help out with. And they exactly told me we got five minutes now because they went from twenty to five. Okay. So you got one second. You got one minute, <laughs> and then you got one minute. And we're gonna dismiss with y'all twenty, with y'all five. Move on. Go ahead, DJ. 
Uh, no, I, I think this was a great show. Ken, if I, you, you have a lot of uh, great ideas. You did share some of the things that you want to do in the community. Mm -hmm. You didn't go into great detail here, but I already know what your plan is and what you want to do, uh, you know, for, for the city of Battle Creek. And I'm glad you're back home, uh, and it'd be my honor to, you know, to work with you and help you do whatever you need to do. Uh, Kingdom Builders is always here. We always got our doors open for, uh, you know, for you and anybody else in the community has some great ideas and want to share, you know, always willing to do whatever it takes to make our community better. Amen. And I, you got one minute to say something to you people, man, to the whole um, community. Let's just get together and uh, talk about it. Uh, we know what a lot of problems are, but let's uh, attack the solution. Um, as you said, the, the, the felons that can't get a home, I want to do something about that. I mean, the, the government is supplying a pipeline for felons. So we need to supply a pipeline that is going to help them, you know what I'm saying, in the housing. When you say supplying the power line, what you mean by that? I mean, they're going to continue to <laughs> put cases and indictments on people. Man, so, say that. They, but they're going to come out, too. That's right. And it's up to us to do the things on the re-entry of them coming back yes. and the transition back into yes. the community. Yes. It's all up to us. Yes. The torch is in our hands, so yes. what are we going to do? And so, I want to continue to say this as we close. Yep, change coming, butter. Yep. Look, y'all. Look. We got all these organizations that's popping up. Yep. And I'm proud of y'all. I'm happy. But I'm also concerned about who's funding you. Because if they fund you and don't support you, just another organization to divide us and conquer us. You do not want to make this a beautiful thing. All these organizations that's popping up, let's all come together at the kitchen table. Matter of fact, you can host it. Until we come together, change never going to come. Now, this brother here is another prime example. Did six years, but he changed his life. You got Elijah Glass, 22 years old, trying his very best, but he's having a hard time navigating and we're doing all we can to knock these doors down. Why? Because all we need is people in power to fix things and make things a little better for us. Housing. Help us. Let us buy units. We'll raise the money. We'll get the capital. As James Brown said, we ain't asking for nothing. Just give us the same opportunity that you give everybody else. So I'll keep preaching that message until I'm dead. Because the reality is, this brother can dream all day long, but until we give him what he needs, he got to stay strong in his faith because discouragement is a reality. I give honor to all my ancestors. My father, the great Hugh Smith Sr., my grandmother, Gussie Smith, and my grandfather, Edward West Smith. On my mom's side, Leo Del Perry Sr., Ruby Elizabeth Perry and my beloved mother who's still with us, Georgia Lee Perry Howard. Listen, y'all. The tribe of Issachar, they understood the time. We know what time it is, y'all, 2019. But we got to make some things work. It's about empowerment. It's about empowering ourselves. And be aware, when you empower yourself, the enemy has a problem with that. Because they want to rule. But like you said in the beginning, we king's children. We're the rule, Amen. and we're to reign. All right, y'all, we get ready to pray. Kind Father, we thank you, thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your tender mercy. God bless Brother Kenneth in his endeavor. Give him the peace that he needs. And I thank you for greatness, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.